Amen. It's good to be in God's house, isn't it? Amen. Coming to worship the Lord. Amen. Two weeks in a row, we're back in the Lord's house all together again. It's good to be with our brothers and sisters and worshiping the Lord and magnifying Him. Amen. Let's start our service by lifting our hands all over the building. Lord, we love you. We thank you, Lord, for your presence. It's already here. God, you're an awesome and mighty God. Hallelujah. God, you're great and greatly to be praised. God, it is great to be in your house. God, it is wonderful to be in your house, God. God, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. We're here to worship you, God, and lift you up today to magnify you and worship you. God, we give you praise right now in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. We love you, Nobody beside you, there has never been anyone, anything like you. Nobody beside you. 
Let's lift him up this morning. Hallelujah. God, the battle is yours. Hallelujah. We lift you up, Jesus. Hallelujah. You're an awesome, victorious Savior. Hallelujah. We worship you. Thank you, Lord God, for everything right now. God, we thank you for your spirit. Amen. God is moving in such a great way right now. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer. Amen. If you have any special needs right now, and as they put those up on the screen as well, we're, if you have any special needs, let it be known of the lifting of your hand right now. Amen. God sees those needs. Now, let's lift the other hand to heaven right now. God is moving in this house, and we want to take his need to him right now. Jesus, you're awesome, God. You're powerful. God, you're a great and mighty God. Jesus, God, we know that all things are possible through you, just like Brother Miller preached the other last week. God, we know that everything is possible for you. God, now we bring it, our prayer needs to you today, God. God, because we know that, Lord, you answered the first prayer. God, we know that, God, God, you're still the same as you were yesterday, today, and forever, God. And, Lord, you still do the miracles that you still do. God, you still do the healings that you still do. God, we know that you're there. And, God, we pray right now in the name of Jesus uh, for your healing, God, to be upon this congregation. For the ones that have sick in their bodies, we pray in Jesus' name. God, for mighty healing right now. God, mighty deliverance, God. God, touch them right now, God. Heal their bodies in the name of Jesus. Jesus, uh, as we pray right now, God, in the name of Jesus, uh, Lord, we, uh, we pray right now in the name of Jesus uh, for healings, God, God, for sicknesses to be healed, God, for things to be broken, to be healed, God, we pray right now in the name of Jesus uh, all over this building, uh, we believe it by boldness and strength uh, in the name of Jesus, now let's worship him, God, we thank you in the name of Jesus, now we worship you in faith in Jesus name oh shame is a prison as cruel as a grave shame is a robber and he's come to take my name oh love is my redeemer Lifting me up from the ground. Love is the power where my freedom song is found. There ain't no
tree the lamb of god was crucified and he went on down the hill he took back every
praise he is so worthy of. God, we love you today. God, we worship you, God, for you are worthy of our praise. Come on, let's worship, let's rejoice. Let's give him worship this morning. God, we praise you, Lord. We thank you, mighty God, for what you're doing in each and every one of our lives. God, we can spend our lives worshiping you, and we would never give you what you are deserving of. We worship and magnify you. Praise you, mighty God. God, we love you today, God. We thank you, mighty God. We worship you, God. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. It's so good to be in his house this morning. It's so good to see each and every one of you. I welcome all of our guests this morning. Can we give our guests a good hand? We are so glad that you have decided to be with us this morning. Amen, amen. You may be seated. I thank you for your worship and your response to God's spirit in this place because he is here. He is here today and we are so thankful for it. Amen. Once again, I'm so glad to see each and every one of you as I know that people are beginning to trickle back into church now that we've opened the doors our, our second week uh, in our in our first phase of reopening and we are 
we are glad that you are here. And for all that are still watching by way of the web, uh, we're glad that you're still with us by way of the web. And uh, we can't wait to see you back here in this sanctuary. To any guests that are watching, if you're not a member of Eagle Man Apostolic Church and you're watching us uh, for the first time, or you maybe you've been watching us for a few times, we continue to welcome you as our guest. And we would love to see you in God's house with us very, very soon. Amen. I have a few, and actually have several announcements I'm going to go through, some things I want to talk about before we take up our offering. Um, first off, if you are a high school or college graduate, uh, we ask that you would please let us know so that we can honor you in our service the last Sunday of this month, May 31st. I realize this is just a couple weeks out, but if you are a high school or college graduate, um, I ask that you would please let my wife know immediately following service. If you can contact her today, um, we want to honor all of our graduates. We do this every year uh, around this time, and so we want to honor our graduates. So please let us know, let my wife know, and we will make sure that we do all that we can to honor you in a special service on Sunday, May the 31st. Also, if you ordered a t-shirt, it's in the front lobby and it's ready for you to pick up. Uh, many have, have ordered those, some have paid, some haven't, but those are available for you to pick up in the front lobby. And we also have shirts in all sizes uh, for you if you're interested in purchasing one of those. Now to, to I'm going to take a little bit of time here and, and I ask that you would, that you would please listen because I know how this usually goes. I'll go through all of this, and then after service, you'll ask me the, a question about everything I just talked about, as though I never talked about it. But, and I, and I already what exactly? <laughs> so, each week we you know we we want to continue opening up more and doing uh, more and more and doing what we can. However, we want to do this in a very uh, orderly fashion and in a phased approach for your safety and also for liability reasons. And we thank you. I, I personally thank you for your cooperation. Um, I, I can't imagine for those who don't handle change well what the last couple months has been like for you. Um, because it seems like every week something else changes or has changed. And so may, and maybe this has been good for all of us. Uh, maybe this is just conditioning us for change. I see people just shaking their heads, some grimacing right now at the thought of change. Um, but I, I thank you for all of your cooperation through all of this. And I'm and, and, and excited. To, to announce the continuing of our second phase of reopening. Next Sunday, we will have our Sunday school classes reopened here on campus. <laughs> Amen. Um, I am very excited at this. Um, some have asked why, you know, why, why now? Why have I made the decision? Or because, you know, we, I, June was mentioned at different points unless something could, could happen. But this week, Tennessee has announced they are reopening everything, including theme parks and, and I mean, and, all of it, and and my thoughts are, if we can go to Dollywood, my God, we can have Sunday school. So, <laughs> and so we we will be reopening Sunday school. They ha they still have the recommendation of of no gatherings larger than ten. Um, after looking through our Sunday school class and, and what who all we have registered in each of those classes, currently we we have no classes with ten or more people in them except for our adult Sunday school class, which will remain here in the sanctuary, so that will continue. As usual, we'll be here with Sister Triplett. The second uh, uh, second uh, class that would, that would, I guess, go against that recommendation is our family development class that usually meets here in the first room on the right. So to try to, to try our best to be in compliance with, the, with our phase two of reopening, the family development class will be meeting in the Family Life Center. This will allow them to spread out a little more. We have a sound system out there. And uh, Pastor, uh, our founding pastor, Pastor David Triplett, will be completing his series that he had been teaching in there prior to all of this. And so that will, that will continue once again next Sunday. So is everybody on board so far? Everybody knows? So, so once again, we will be having Sunday school um, next Sunday. Now for our, our times of how we're going to do all this. Next Sunday, we will have Sunday school at our, at our normal time. We've always had it for, I guess, forever uh, at 10 a.m., so at 10 a.m., you can arrive here, and we will we will have a Sunday school opener right here in the service, and then we will dismiss our classes. So this is kind of getting back a little bit into our routine. So for those who don't like change, this is kind of getting back a little bit into your routine here. So at 10 a.m. next Sunday morning, we'll, we'll gather right here in the sanctuary. Uh, if you can be here a little before 10, that'd be great, but we'll, we'll, we'll start service right here at 10. Then we will have Sunday school, and our worship service will be at 1130. 
So for those that don't like change, you just, all of a sudden you grimace because you thought it was all going to be back the same. So at 1130, you say, why is this? Well, with, with us kind of spreading out a little more, we're trying to, to limit so it's not so much hustle bustle and everybody coming down the hall at the same time, shoulder to shoulder. It gives us a little more time to dismiss classes, delay things, allow parents to get their children, get them back, get to your seats. And so this just gives us an extra 10 or 15 minutes there. And so once again, next Sunday, um, we will have Sunday school at 10 a.m. And then our worship service will be at 11.30 a.m. And we're going to continue with only one service for now in our phase two approach because we want to do a deep cleaning and sanitation of our entire campus um, in, in between our services. And now with us spreading out throughout the entire campus, that's a lot more cleaning and, and sanitation involved. And so, so for the next couple weeks in our phase two approach, we will continue with one service, but it will be Sunday school at 10 o'clock. And then our worship service here in the sanctuary with everyone together at 11.30 a.m. Everybody, everybody good. Everybody got that. All right. <laughs> so we, we are excited about this, excited to, to open up and get back to our Sunday school classes. I, I personally reached out to every Sunday school teacher this morning and, and ran it by them just to double check and make sure they were okay with, with us moving into this phase two. And I received a unanimous yes from our Sunday school teachers. Um, I've had Sunday school teachers texting me weeks ago saying, please let us go back to Sunday school. Please, we want Sunday school now. So uh, I'm excited to allow them to get back to class as usual, and we are excited as well. Also, um, the last Sunday of this month, so two weeks, May 31st, the same Sunday of which we are honoring our graduates. Um, that, is, that is also being followed by what we've, we've had on our calendar anyways since the beginning of this year, our annual church picnic at Mountain View Park. And um, I... Looking at everything going on, I, I plan to, to keep that on our calendar. And so that is the last Sunday of this month. So we, we, we plan to, to keep our, our church picnic at Mountain View Park. This will immediately follow our May 31st service. However, there will be a, a few slight changes. So our custom has always been a potluck dinner. Everybody brings a potluck, and, and everybody brings your own spoons, and it's just a, everybody go at it. You bring the best fixings in the world, and, and it's just every man for himself. Um, however, in, in a, I guess that would kind of go against every recommendation that's in the book, I believe. <laughs> so what we're going to do this year is to take some precautions. Uh, we're going to grill. We're going to provide all, the, all the, the fixings, if you will. We'll have food, and we will have desserts and different things, and um, we will... We will serve, we will cook and serve you at the picnic um, as a way, once again, to kind of limit on how much stuff is being touched and handed and passed around. Um, once again, this is not what I want to do. This is not what I would like to do because I would, I would love to have all your food. Usually when I go, I have to get three plates just to hold a little bit of what everybody brought, and, uh, and I leave feeling miserable. But it's, it's worth it, <laughs> you know. But however, so this this is what we're going to do this year, and, and and I ask that you would that you would feel free to, to give. Uh, we're not going to charge anybody for this. I do ask that you would feel free to give donations towards the food, whether in a service or at the picnic. Uh, but once again, this is open to anyone, everyone, any guests, anybody that's watching by way of the web. We would love to have you join us. And once again, this is on May Sunday, May 31st. This will immediately follow our 11:30 service which would put us over there probably, I would say, around 1 o'clock. So when service is over, ask as quickly as you can get over there. We'll get over there, and we will start eating, and we're going to have a good time. So, and once again, this is, this is if you don't feel comfortable getting out and getting in a group of people and eating, I understand. I'm not forcing anybody to do anything. Uh, but we're going we're gonna to get together, and we're going to eat and have a good time. Is that all right? Amen. All right. I'm going to ask our ushers to make their way. Every, everybody's still good. Everybody all right? All right. Good deal. Man, we like I said, we have continued in, in prayer and in, in watching to see what others are doing and, and trying our best. But this is this moving forward has has come about among, um, has come about with much prayer and much consideration um, as we want to do what is best for our church. Because once again, your safety and our people, God's people, uh, is our top priority. And I thank all of you and love all of you, and so glad that you are continuing to to come and join us. If you would please stand this morning as we prepare to pray over our offering. Once again, with our offering, you may give through many ways. You can give through PayPal by giving to Eagle Band Apostolic Church at gmail.com. You can mail as an offering to P.O. Box 489, 
Flint, Tennessee, and then you can give them right here in God's house when we all gather here together. Amen. So right now, if you want to lift your hand, and we're going to pray together over our tithes and offering. Brother Zion, here we go. Upon the authority of your word, I have given, and it shall be given back to me. Pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I am a tither. I bring my tithe today into your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked. The curse is broken. I live under an open heaven. You pour out upon me such a blessing that there is not enough room to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and incomes, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, debts demolished, and royalties received. My whole family saved and walking with God, perfect health and abundance to walk in divine favor and blessing. I am blessed going in, and I am blessed going out. All that I do will prosper in Jesus' name. Amen. Can we give the Lord a hand clap of praise? God, we thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in each and every one of our lives. Amen. I, inv I invite you now to give your tithes and offering. You would march under the direction of our ushers. As the music plays, you may do so at this time. Before, before I, today I've, I've got a lot of information, different things I'm giving. When I get to preaching, I promise I'll be shorter than what I usually am so that I get you out here about the same time. Um, but first, I want to, uh, we, we do our offering prayer. It's something that we started at the beginning of this year, and I receive testimonies nearly weekly. Um, most, it seems like, don't want to testify uh, about it because they either don't want to talk publicly or they don't want people to know they got a raise, and I'm okay with that. <laughs> However, I, I do I do constantly ask people if they'd be willing to testify, and um, and I have a couple people that that were, were willing, and I want to ask Sister Tabitha to make her way right now, and she's going to come testify to the goodness of God this morning. I ask that you give you her attention. Can we give the Lord a hand clap of praise? Praise the Lord, Church. Um, we've been saying the offering prayer, and of course, I like many of you probably had some doubts and. Uh, Oh, I were you repeating this, whatever. I've been paying tithes for years. But anyways, so um, I've been at Regions Bank a little over a year and a half. I changed jobs recently, which that's still pretty new. And unexpectedly in January for my annual review, I was told I was being promoted and asked for it. Nice little gift to go with that. Um, so it, it was a shocker, nice raise, nice promotion, and then um, it just, they're kind of large, so it takes months for things like that to go through. It was just finally approved last week, so it's official, so I'm thrilled about that, bonuses, bonuses. and then in addition to that, uh, the ladies know, I talked about it in class, I love to work out. That's my, that's my thing, that's my time. I take an hour in the morning, and it's actually turned into kind of a spiritual thing for me. 
um, there's been numerous times I'm in there on the elliptical doing whatever, and I've started speaking in tongues while I'm working out. And recently, my uh, Nordic track died on me, which that's the most expensive piece of equipment I have. And I told my husband, I said, we're going in debt. <laughs> Brace yourself, we're going in debt. And unexpectedly, the very next day, I had told uh, somebody I work with about what had happened. They showed up two days later with a $2,000 piece of equipment and gave it to me. So I didn't skip a beat. Yeah, I was in there the next morning working out. A little tears, a little speaking in tongues, a little crying. God can, God can talk to you anywhere. So that's where he talks to me. And we got a contract on our house today. Amen, amen. Lord is awesome, isn't he? Amen. Thank you, Sister Tab, for sharing raises and bonuses, gifts and surprises, estates. Amen. We pray it and God answers. God hears our prayer. One other, I want Brother Jeremy to come at this time, and he's also going to share a testimony this morning. Amen. Uh, praise the Lord. Um, so with the addition of our, our youngest, uh, Lila, last year, uh, we ran out of room in our old house. And uh, so we, we went through the process of uh, purchasing land, building a house. And wouldn't you know it, right when we built the house and moved in, coronavirus. And uh, we had concerns with, you know, um, trying to sell a house, um, maintaining two mortgages and whatnot. And then, uh, you know, uncertainty with work. So I work at UPS, and I've been blessed to be an essential employee. And, uh, and, and at UPS, business is up, and, and we're blessed in that way. Um, but we, we did have concerns and worries about, you know, selling a house. And... Um, we were working with our realtor, um, and, you know, we, we got an offer, accepted it in a month. It was at, at our asking price, and, uh, you know, during the COVID-19 outbreak. So that was a blessing, and then... Additionally, um, you know, we weren't expecting raises to be great, and uh, I got a significant well above average raise in March, and uh, so I just wrote down some points. Um, be diligent in your finances. Don't, don't be slack, lackadaisical. Um, be intentional in your giving. It's not if you have it, you'll give it if you don't. Plan it out when you get your paycheck. I'm going to support a missionary. I'm, going to, I'm personally going to put food on that missionary's table. Um, and then also have faith in God. You know, it may not make sense. You may not have the money in the account, but it'll blow your mind what the Lord will provide. Thank you. Amen. Amen, amen. We worship him today. He is worthy of our praise. Amen. Amen. We serve an amazing God. An amazing God. I was, I was telling someone the other day, the, the, best, the best investment you can give is, is, is through giving. <laughs> the best investment strategy is giving because God blesses a, a faithful giver. And I, I thank both of them for being willing to, to stand up here and testify. I know I asked Brother, I text Brother Jeremy during musician's practice. I'm like, hey, you want to testify this morning? Uh, maybe, yes, okay. <laughs> and I thank them for being willing. So during, during all of this, this COVID-19, um, we, we expanded in a, in a lot of areas, especially on our vir the virtual side of things. Uh, as many of you know, many of you gave to our, our live stream in, in which we are, we are still making purchases with the money that you gave and donated through that. Uh, in trying to improve our live stream and our camera feeds, uh, we're, we're exploring right now the, the the option of 
of expanding with having even multiple cameras to give you different angles um, and, and to be able to do as much as we can to have the best quality audio and video. And as most of you know and have been watching over the last couple of months, that has improved tremendously. And, uh, and I'm so thankful for all the people that have been involved and are helping with that. Um, however, if, if any of you are, in, are interested in being involved with our video and the media and, and audio, that kind of thing, we, we, we need all the help we can get. Uh, we've we've kind of we've kind of tricked people into helping us. <laughs> Some of the people that are operating and running it, I was like, hey, you got a free service to help us here for a minute, and next thing you know, I like put handcuffs on them. And so anybody else that would be willing and helping, once again, this would be something I would love to have a rotation of, of, of a multiplicity of people that would be willing to help in our media uh, with running the computer, also with our live stream. It takes, it takes multiple people to make that work, and it's something that we're blessed to do, we're blessed to be able to do, and I'm thankful for that. However, as with anything, it requires laborers. Amen. The harvest is plentiful. The laborers are few. So any that are willing and able to be laborers and helping in that department, uh, we would very much appreciate your help. Also, when all of this kind of came about, a lot of churches began looking at, at different options of how we can, we can reach and stay connected. Um, that has been a challenge um, for, for many churches, ourselves included. However, we, there are many things of which I am thankful for that we did prior to all of this. One is we had a live stream before we entered all of this. We had online giving options through PayPal. Um, however, during all of this, these are things that we've focused on expanding. And I am excited this morning to, to share with you some new things that we have been working on the last couple months. So first off, if you have your phone today, I want you to take your phone out. Can you take your phone out and hold it up? This is, some of you had it up so quick, I know it was in your hand. And I'm sorry, <laughs> just kidding. So if you have your phone, once again, hold it up for me. Let me see it. Everybody, all right. Now here's what I want you to do. I want you to go to your Apple Store or your Play Store, and I want you to search Eagle Bend Apostolic Church. And when you search that, there in the top top of the list, right around the top, you will see an app with our logo that says Eagle Bend Apostolic Church. And I want you to click on it and download it. And it's going to ask you uh, if you will accept push notifications, that kind of thing. I want you to say yes to all of that. And I'll get into all that here in just a minute. But just, just say yes to, to what it's asking you to do. And... Um, I'll give you a second here to get that. And as you can see, we th that should be the logo you see or something similar to that. We've actually updated the logo, so I don't know that it's the update has come through yet. But that is that will be our current logo up there at the top. And this is available on your Apple devices, your Google devices, and your Amazon devices, such as Kindle or anything like that. So any any mobile device that you have, you will now have access to our app. You can download it for free. And I know some of you are still downloading, but I'm going to begin. I'm just going to walk through it and just take, just take a few minutes here just to kind of introduce you to all of this. So as you open it up, there are many features and options, and this is something that we are in the, still in the development phase. We're continuing to, to expand and develop through. However, we just, we just finally got this through the approval phase for Apple and Google and all of that. And so we, we have it up and it is running. When you open it up, uh, our goal is to keep this as simple as possible so that it's very user-friendly and easy for, for someone that may even not be familiar with many apps or a smart smartphone device or something of that nature. But when you open it up, you'll see uh, the first tab is I'm new. That's not for you because you're new to the app. That's for anybody that is new to our church, anything like that. As you open that up, you will, you will notice that it has a contact fill-out form, kind of the same thing as our visitor card. So this will, once again, as guests come, we could ask them to, to politely download our app. They could fill out the contact form. Once again, this is all things that people aren't, we aren't having to have as much physical contact with cards and that kind of thing right now during this phase. It's, it's a very simple and easy means by which they can do everything on their own device. Um, the second tab you'll see is, is Sunday services. We have, we have been uploading our services since we started the development of this app. And so you can, you can watch service, all of our Sunday services from as far back as the first Sunday in April are already on here. You can go back. You can click on that. 
And if you click on it, it will automatically start playing the video of that service. You can go out of it and just listen to the audio. So you can do either. You can listen to just, you can watch the video with the audio or just listen to the audio as you're driving down the road. Um, all of these things are, you know, are available. If you go back, you also see the same thing for the midweek services. Every midweek service since the beginning of April are on here. You can, you can check them out, listen to them. Also, our adult Sunday school class. For those who have been enjoying Sister Triplett's adult Sunday school lessons, maybe you missed one or two of those, they're all right here on the app. You can watch the video or the audio of those. Also, one thing that, that we've run into a few times with some problems is, is getting prayer requests on the board. You know, if you have a prayer request and you, you catch me or somebody in a drive-by, drive-by meaning I'm, I'm on the way up here and you're on the way back there or something, and, and hey, pray for so-and-so, or can we get them on the net, and, 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 and it falls through the cracks. Well, now you have an option of you just open your app, go to prayer request, type in your prayer request and send it, and it goes straight to that computer back there. And then we can make sure that all those prayer requests are getting added to our board, that it's not, you know, getting lost in the cracks. So all this is all stuff available. Also, you see our Facebook and our YouTube. So you can click either the Facebook or YouTube, and it will take you directly to our page. So if, if you're wanting to watch our service live, you can open up your phone, hit the Facebook tab, and if we're live currently, it will take you directly to our live feed. And so right now, if you're watching, if you if you got it in your hand, you hit Facebook, you're going to look at yourself, or look at me, I guess, but twice here and there. Um, you'll be able to watch all of that live. Then on the bottom, you see a few options there. One is home, which brings you to this home page. The second is a Bible. So within the app is also a Bible app. This is some stuff we're still developing because we will have the features eventually to have our, our Bible reading plans within the app. It's not, we don't have it there yet. We're still exploring some different apps. We're trying to get to that step, but it is something that is possible. We're working with uh, the support of, of who's backing this app, trying to, to figure out those features and, and learn more as, as we move along. Second, you see giving. If you see that, push giving. Push it, that's right. <laughs> so what you see now is a, another giving option. This is something completely new. This is a giving option through the company of which we are using called Subsplash. And this giving option allows you to do a one-time a one-time giving. Uh, you can do it weekly, monthly. So you can set up automated giving through your account on here. Um, I'm, I'm just, once again, we're just giving you as many options as what is available to us. How this works, this is through Subsplash. You would, create an, you would create a user account with their giving. So it's kind of like PayPal where you go, you set up an account. Um, if you can attach credit cards or bank accounts to it, I would suggest and ask like PayPal that you would attach your bank account to it. Once again, this is all very, very secure. But once again, if you attach your bank account like with PayPal, they put like two small deposits and two small withdrawals to verify your account. So it's about a three to four day process of setting up your, your bank account uh, on this app, after which then you can give uh, as much as you would like. You can, you can give all your money if you want. No, I'm, just, I'm just kidding. But it gives you, once again, gives you more options of giving. You can give through credit cards. You can give through your bank account, all of which you can do through our app. And then lastly, on the bottom menu, you see a tab called Events. If you click on that, you will see some of the upcoming events that we have. And each of these events, you can click on it. It has a full description of what the event is, what, what day it's on, what time, the location, all of this stuff. And we, this is something that we, we, it, it will be uh, more updated by this time next week. But we wanted to go ahead and release this to you so you can become, get familiar with it as we continue to, to update it and get as much information on here as possible. But now when you're wondering when that event is or when did he say that was going to be, or what time is that, you can just pull out your app, click on it, hit events, and there's all the information you need. And so we want to have as much of this as, as accessible to you as possible. Is that exciting or what? <laughs> Amen. And so once again, you have, uh, we, we have some promotional items. We'll begin promoting our app um, However, along with the app, uh, one thing that we have lacked for some time is a, is a current and updated web present through our website. Uh, our website has been pretty severely outdated for, for some number of years. And this same company of which we are using to develop the app through 
also has the same features to help us develop a new website, also of which I'd like to release to you today. And so you can now go to eaglebin.org, and you will find our newly developed website, um, all of which you can begin going through those different slides there you have. You can... Uh, you see all the about, you can go to Connect, where you can view all of our children's Sunday school classes, our students, adult class, all of our eye groups, volunteers, missions, everything is on, on our app. You can keep going. Uh, you, of course, you see the, the different media. You can go to media. There's the latest message that was put on there, and it's, you can see it's updated. We, once, once, once we were getting to finish recording a service, we automatically update it to the website. The website and the app share folders. So once we upload something to the website, it's automatically uploaded to the app. It all syncs together and works together. And so once again, everything you saw on here is already uploaded on our website. Giving, the same giving option of which you have on your phone, you can do through, the, through our website. So you can go to our website, click Give, and it's the same account, same everything that you set up on your phone. Um, you can continue there. We have, once again, presenting an, an information about our Eagle Bend Mother Day -O, Mother's Day Out. Uh, MDO Mother's Day oh. <laughs> our Mother's Day out also you see the mobile there's a mobile app you can click on that so anybody that's interested in what's going on you can click on the mobile app there's an entire page of which you can go and you can click on uh, whatever m device you're using whether Apple whether Android whether Amazon it has a link on that page for you to click on and you can download our app and then also the same thing as that you saw on our app we have a page for I'm new which is if you're if for a guest or someone that's new to our church, new to who we are and what we believe, they can click on that. I'm new and find out a lot of information of who, of, of who we are and what we have going on. And this is all stuff once again that is still still in the development stage. Yet we are very comfortable and confident in what we are releasing to our public. And this is something once again because we're living in a very virtual age and people that you can find anything on the internet. We're trying to get this that we've been trying to get this out as quickly as we possibly could to have an, an online presence. So once again, you, you now have the app, we have a website, and this is stuff that we wanted to share with you this morning. And I'm very excited to share all of this with you, amen? Amen. amen. <laughs> so once again, if uh, you know, this will be stuff that we're, we're still finalizing and getting, getting more information on there uh, as, as the weeks go by. But uh, I'm sure if you, as you get on there and begin searching and looking around, you'll see that everything is very updated. It is very up to date on, on all fronts, and we plan to keep it that way. We plan to keep it update, updated and current. And, uh, and I, I'm so thankful for all that have been helping with that. I also want to personally thank Sister Brooke Poole. She has, she has put a tremendous amount of time into this app and this website, and I thank her personally for, for doing all of that for us. Now, if you have your Bibles, <laughs> if you would mind standing one more time and stretch your legs. Like I said, I told you, today is information overload. But uh, there's a lot of good stuff going on around here, and I just wanted to share all of that with you this morning. Psalms chapter 72, beginning in verse 8. Psalms 72 and 8 says, he shall have dominion also from sea to sea, and from the river unto the ends of the earth. They that dwell in the wilderness shall bow before him, and his enemies shall lick the dust. If you jump down to verse 17, it says, and his name shall endure forever. His name shall be continued as long as the sun, and men shall be blessed in him, and all nations shall call him blessed. Blessed be the Lord God, the God of Israel who only doeth wondrous, wondrous things. And blessed be his glorious name forever. Let the whole earth be filled with his glory. Amen and amen. Amen. Let's pray this morning. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you, God, for all that has already gone forth, God. We're so excited for the future of your mighty church here, Lord Eagle Ben Apostolic Church. And right now, God, I pray as your word goes forth, God, that you would let, not let it fall on deaf ears. Help us to receive this word, to apply it to our lives, God, to live this truth, God. Lord, speak to us today, Lord. We take your word, Lord. We want to apply it to our lives and live this truth. And we give you all the praise in the mighty name of Jesus, God. We pray all of these things. Amen, amen. You may be seated this morning.
the scripture foretells the attributes of the coming Messiah, that he will have dominion, that, that men, men will bow before him, that his enemies will lick the dust, that his name will endure forever, and all nations shall call him blessed. And that's our God, amen? That's the Jesus that we celebrate, that we worship. That's the reason we are here today. And I just want to remind us today that his enemies, which are also our enemies, are still eating his dust. Is that all right? So this morning, my, my sermon title is, Another One Bites the Dust. <laughs> Sister Brooke wanted to do a slide with, with Queen on there, and that's, that's not going to happen. <laughs> But I want to take us back because I want to show us something today that I think God wants to remind us of. I, I, and and I've, got, I've, got, I've got dust on the brain, if you will. Because you see, we, we were created from dust. Book of Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden and he put the man there whom he had formed. Exodus also tells us something very interesting about dust. Exodus chapter 8 and verse 16. And the Lord said unto Moses, Say unto Aaron, Stretch out thy rod and smite the dust of the land, that it may become lice throughout all the land of Egypt. And they did so. And Aaron stretched out his hand with his rod and smote the dust of the earth, and it became lice in man. And in beast, and all the dust of the land became lysed throughout all the land of Egypt. This was the third plague of Egypt. Many of us could, could go through the story and, and probably remember most of the plagues, but Moses and Aaron, they come up and they begin talking to Pharaoh, let my people go, let my people go. And they begin the, with the first plague of turning the waters into blood. And the first thing old Pharaoh does is he brings his magicians out and says, y'all come on out here. Let's see y'all replicate that. And so they, they do something and they say, look, we've, we've replicated what you, what you say your God can do. Look at what our gods can do. We, we, can, we can replicate that. The second plague, they come out and they, there's a plague of frogs. Moses, he go, Aaron, they go and they, they call frogs out of the rivers. And I don't know how, but somehow his magicians replicated this, this plague as well. They were able to call frogs out of, the, out, of, out of the water. And all of a sudden, it's, you know, it's kind of a battle between gods, if you will. They said, well, if your God can, look, look at what our God can do. Then we get to the place where God decides to turn the dust into lice. He takes the dust of the ground and turns it in, in, into lice. Just by having Moses, all he did was smite the ground. Aaron, he said, take it and just smite the ground, and all the dust in the land of Egypt will immediately turn into lice. And it was so. And we continue reading. Once again, they've already been replicating everything that's happened up to this point. In verse 18, And the magicians did, with, did so with their enchantments to bring forth lice, but they could not. So there was lice upon every man and upon beast. Interesting that the magicians in Egypt could not replicate or mimic the miracle of the dust. They could do it with water, and they could do it with frogs, but when it came to dust, seemingly they lost all power. Seemingly they could not change anything from this point forward. And the magicians stopped trying to keep up with Moses and Aaron altogether from this point forward. And they testified to Pharaoh. Let's keep reading verse 19. And the magicians said unto Pharaoh, This is the finger of God. This is the finger of God. The magicians, these, these false prophets and people that, that are sitting there replicating, trying to prove what their false idols and gods can do, came, to, came, came over to the side with old Pharaoh and said, they've gone too far. <laughs> we can't go any further because they started messing with the dust of the ground. And you know what that tells me? It tells me that only God can change the dust. That only God can change the very fabric of dust or take the dust from the ground and turn it into a living organism. He did it all the way back in Genesis. And then he did it again in Exodus. And you see this changing of dust into a living organism, into a living soul. Because you see, that there, but there are some things that your enemy just can't do. 
There are some things that your enemy cannot do. Your God can change the dust in the ground, but then there comes a point in which false gods and idols and Satan himself does not have the power to do. Because he, Satan was not meant to change the dust. He was meant to eat the dust. You see, Genesis, Genesis 3 and 14, And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, Thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field, and upon thy belly thou shalt go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of your life. Satan is cursed to eat God's dust for all eternity. And so are our enemies and your enemies. See, see, you know, and, and I love the fact that every plague that the Lord sent to Egypt was a direct shot at one of their false gods. Every, every, every one of those was a direct slap in the face to, to an Egyptian god. For this particular one what was the god Geb, which is the god of the earth, because it proved that our god is the true god of the earth. Their god of the earth couldn't change one thing, couldn't change one molecule of dust on this earth, but we serve a god that in an instant, every dust, every piece of dust was changed in a moment. You see, and it, 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 it once again, it proved. Our God is in the proving business. That's why he said, prove me. See if I won't open up the window. See if I won't do this. Just, just test me. Prove me. Because God is in the proving business. He will prove himself to you. If you're looking and say, I don't, I don't know about this God, just ask him to prove himself to you. Because we serve a God that enjoys proving himself. Why? Because he wants the glory. He wants the glory in your life. He wants the glory in your children's life. And I ask you to ask God to prove himself to you. You see, the truth is, is that every, every idol God will fall before the only true God. Every idol, every false God, everything you put up and say, well, this may be able to stack up with my God, will fall before him. They may bring temporary happiness or, or momentary fulfillment, false peace, but in the end, they only bring one thing, and that is destruction. They will bring death. That is always there, and they always have, because, and they always will, because false gods will always eat our creator's dust. It reminds me of when the Philistines, when they captured the Ark of the Covenant, and they put it in the house of their god, Dagon. 1 Samuel 5 and 1, And the Philistines took the Ark of God and brought it from Ebenezer to Ashdod. And when the Philistines took the Ark of God, they brought it into the house of Dagon. And they set it by Dagon. They, they brought the Ark of the Covenant, and they set it by their false god, Dagon. And when they of Ash and when they of Ashdod arose early on the morrow, behold, Dagon was fallen upon his face to the earth before the ark of the Lord. And they took Dagon and they set him back up, put him back in place, and said, No, 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 you, you stay up there. We're, we're supposed to be bowing down to you. Why is your why is your face in the dirt? That's not how it's supposed to be. And they took him, they set him back up, and they said, And when they arose early on, on tomorrow morning, Behold, Dagon was fallen on his face to the ground before the ark of the Lord, and the head of Dagon and both the palms of his hands were cut off upon the threshold. Only the stump of Dagon was left. It just goes to show you that idol gods will never stand up against the one true God because he is a sovereign God. Every idol, everything you put up against God will eat his dust. That will bow before him. They can't stack up. They can't hold on because there's nothing that stacks up or compares to our God. Speaking of Dagon, I'll give you a modern example. NASA spotted what they thought was an exoplanet orbiting a, a nearby star, which is, is very rare, very unheard of. And, and so, but they, they, it was this detectable light. And these exoplanets are, are typically too small or too far away for them to even identify. And so astronomers were excited when they discovered what they claimed to be the first exoplanet. That they, that, and they even they gave it a name. Guess what they named it? Dagon. This was what, and the article called this exoplanet the well-beloved planet. It was something that astronomers, they, they almost worshipped. It was something they had been looking for, for some of them for their entire lives. And so finally they had this beloved planet of which they named Dagon. And, and they began to track it. And then one year it disappeared. Awestruck, they began reevaluating their finding. And it turns out that Dagon had not been an exoplanet at all. But it had been, they had simply witnessed a collision between two space bodies that resulted in a glowing flame that eventually burned out. And, and this is what the article word for word says. It says, the results suggest that this well-beloved planet wasn't a planet at all, but rather an ever-expanding dust cloud that formed after two large icy bodies collided. Once again, Dagon bit the dust. 
And once again, that thing that man wants to put their trust in, that man wants to look at and say, oh, let's call this Dagon. This is awesome. We found something rare. We found something amazing. I'm here to tell you we got something more amazing than anything they want to name Dagon, anything you'll find in outer space. Why? Because he created it. He created the things of which they're trying to give credit to, and they're trying to say, look at how amazing this is. Let me show you how amazing my God is. Because nothing stacks it. If that doesn't make your, if that doesn't make your day, I don't know what does. That made mine. Because once again, a false God bites the dust. And I hope this tells someone that science and modern-day understandings of things will never stack up to the wisdom that we find right here. It will never stack up to the wisdom that we find in God's Word, which brings me, which brings me to my point today. Because all this is great, but what does it mean to us? Because I want to remind us once again that there is no God like our God. There is no God like, and, and I'm sure th th there are idols in the, plenty in this world. And if we're not careful, we could find ourselves relying on them. We could find ourselves worshiping them. You see, these, these days, idols are, aren't, aren't often made of, of gold and silver. In, in, the old, in the Old Testament, you look through, there's a lot of gold images and idols. Today, it, it's not so much that. They can be, but for the most part, that's, they're disguised a lot better today than they were then. Because an idol in our day is anything that we place in greater importance than God. Anything that we place in a greater importance than God becomes an idol in our life. So anything that keeps us from praying or studying the word, fasting or giving or doing God's will is an idol in our lives. And we're worshiping a false God. And if we don't have time to, to seek the Lord on a daily basis, if we don't have time to, to, to but, but yet we have time to, to work and shop and get on Facebook and do all the things that we enjoy, yet we have no time for God, then perhaps we should check and make sure that we're not worshiping false gods, that we're not setting up idols in our lives. Why? Because those will never stack up to our God. They will never bring the fulfillment that our God brings. They will never bring the victory of which our God brings. Because once again, anything we put before God's word and his will means that we have a false God. And they'll never stack up in his presence. Anything you put your trust in above God is a false God. Whether, you, whether your own ability, whether the government, your family, your friend, your finances, your job, they can all become false gods if we place them in greater importance than God in our lives. And as long as we worship them, there's no room for Jesus. You see, when they put Jesus in the house of Dagon, there was only room for one God in that house. There was only room for one God, and we know which God that was because God is a jealous God. He does not like sharing a house with another false idol or false God. Why? Because they do nothing for you. They can do nothing for you. And so our God does not want to share, share the, this vessel or this house, this temple with any other God than him. And as long as we're worshiping him, there's no room for Jesus. So he will not bless you while we worship while we worship idols. He will not condone our idolatry just because we come to church every Sunday. He won't condone our idolatry just because we show up and just because we participate if the rest of the week we're engulfed in idol worship. That is why, once again, we must make sure that God is our source that he is the source of which we draw life from. I'm going to ask our musicians to come right now. You see, and false gods will never satisfy us like Jesus. It doesn't matter what it is. There is no amount of money. There is no idol. There is no material thing. There is no person, no government, no country, nothing in this world that will bring you fulfillment like Jesus will. Because none of that stuff can even come close to stacking up to him. All these things one day are going to eat, they're going to eat his dust. One after another, they will begin to fail. One after another. And see, and they're, they're just distractions. They're distractions to keep us from what he wants in your life and his will for your life. Because here's the truth. Science will fail. Modern technology, even though we're, we're, we're expanding and we're trying to do more stuff, modern technology will fail. Yep. Doctors will fail. The government will fail. Economies will fail. We're here. Friends will fail. Family will fail. Programs will fail. Opinions will fail. But let me tell you something that will not fail. God will not fail. Our, our God, the, the Lord God of all, the sovereign God. But if we want the blessings of God, 
We have to make him our source, our priority, not just something we're supposed to do, not just something we do when we have time, but the thing in our day, not just a thing in our day, the thing that gets us up in the morning, the thing that we think about, the center of our lives, the center of our homes, the center of our families, the center of our finances, the center of our work, the center of everything in our life. That's what Jesus wants to be in your life. He wants to be the center. And if we remove all the idols and we make him number one, he'll change this dust into something that we can't even imagine. Because if he he can paint the sunset, there's nothing I love than to sit on my porch and watch the sun go down and the sky just all these amazing colors. You know how he does that? The atmosphere is filled with dust. If he can do that with dust, think of what he can do with this dust. <laughs> if he can look at do something so amazing and so beautiful with dust, look at what he can do with you, what he can do with me. You see, and, and, and I think we need reminding sometimes, Satan cannot change you. You say, well, Satan did this to me. He can influence you, he can affect you, he can tempt you, but he cannot change you. But God can. You say, well, I need to change. Well, God can change you in an instant. God can save you if you want to be saved. Satan can't do that. He doesn't have that power nor that authority. He'll tempt you and influence you and do everything he can, but he cannot change who you are because he only has so much power. He only has so much power over us, and that's just what we give him. Because remember, with Egypt, all it took was Aaron smiting the ground, and the dust became living. The dust became alive. After, after that third plague, the devil and all his, they, they packed up their bags and left. And they said, oh, he just started messing with the dust. We ain't got nothing we can do on him now. We can't stack up to that. We, we don't have any power over that. See, somebody needs to get victory over the, day, over, over the devil today. Somebody needs to throw down some idols in your life. Somebody needs to decide that you're going to consecrate their days to Jesus. That they're going to give God every morning of their life, every evening of their life, making sure that we're committing to Him daily in prayer and reading and fasting, consistent in giving and spreading the gospel. Because these are the greatest things. These are the things that we need to invest our lives in today. As you stand this afternoon, I want you to pray right where you are. I want you, whether you bow your head or lift your hands, I want you to pray this afternoon. I don't, not, not just close your eyes and bow your head. I want you to talk to God this morning. We need to make sure that He is our source. Let's make sure that we're not pitting anything before Him, that we've made no false idols in our lives. These altars are open if, if you want to come. I'm not going to force and ask everybody to come, but if you need a trip to an altar, it's open for you. It's available. I want us to make sure that He is our source. God, we love you this morning. God, we thank you. We worship you. We praise you, mighty God. Jesus, we need you. We need you, God. God, help us to make sure that we put you before all else because you will never fail. You will never fail, God. Everything else in this world may fail, but you will never fail. God, help us to look in the mirror, to search our lives, to check our hearts. God, to make you a priority in our lives.
what belongs to you doesn't belong to our enemy. You take what the enemy God, you turn it for, you turn it for good, Lord. God, you take what our enemy meant for evil. You turn it for our good because we know that all things work together to the good. Jesus, we trust in you. We love you. We put our trust and hope in you. you'll pray and continue praying. First Chronicles 10 and 6 says, So Saul died, and his three sons and all his house died together. And when all the men of Israel that were in the valley saw that, they fled. And Saul and his sons were dead, and they forsook their cities and fled. And the Philistines came and dwelt in them, and, they, and it came to pass on the morrow when the Philistines came to strip the slain that they found Saul and his sons fallen in Mount Geboa. And they stripped him, and they took his head and his armor and sent into the land of the Philistines round about to carry tidings unto their idols and to the people. And they put his armor in the house of their gods and fastened his head in the temple of Dagon. The God of which his head fell off just standing in God's presence. Now the king of Israel's head lied before this false god, Dagon. But you continue in verse 13. It tells us why and what happened. So Saul died for his transgression, which he committed against the Lord, even against the word of the Lord, which he kept not. And also for asking counsel of one that had a familiar spirit to inquire of it and inquired not of the Lord. Therefore, he slew him and turned the kingdom unto David, the son of Jesse. If you choose to abandon your trust in God and serve idols, we will find ourselves on the altar of a false god. Sacrifice there. Your, the end is destruction. The end is death. But if you pitch your full trust and your full faith in God, you will be buried with the kings and the heroes of faith. It's time you tell your enemy to eat your dust because there is only one God in your life and his name is Jesus. Amen. Before we leave, why don't we lift our hands and let's worship that one true God today as we close in prayer. Dear Lord, I thank you. God, I thank you for your spirit. God, I thank you for your anointing, your power, God, that is in this place. God, I thank you for your sacrifice, the life that you live and the life that you gave so that we might have life and have it more abundantly. God, I pray, Lord, that you would help us to check our hearts. Help me, love. Me, God, to check myself. God, to make sure that I've placed nothing in my life in greater importance than you, God. Not my time, not productivity. Lord, I pray, God, that I make you first always in my life. In all things, God, to know that my source comes from you. 
My life comes from you, God. Nothing else in this world will satisfy. Nothing else in this world will fulfill but you, God. And I thank you and worship you today, Lord. God, I pray that you would bless your people here today, that you would bless them as they leave this place, that you would bless their coming in and their going out. God, I pray, Lord, for their families, that they would be saved, God, that they would be highly favored. I pray over all the prodigals, Lord, that are here today, God, that are listening. God, I pray that you would bring them home, Lord. We worship you today, and we thank you, and we give you praise for all that you've done and all that you are continuing to do in each and every one of our lives. We worship you, and we give you all the praise today, mighty God. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray all these things. Amen and amen. Once again. I thank all of you for being here. Don't forget, Wednesday night, 7 p.m. right here in the sanctuary. Next Sunday, Sunday school at 10 a.m. here on campus. Service at 1130. We look forward to seeing you then. If you're, if you're praying, you can continue praying. But we thank you for being here and worshiping with us today. God bless you. You are dismissed.